so I will probably never make an HF VTTC or anyways an electric flame bigger than this. This is already mental for my standards. Uh, first of all, the tube is gigantic. It's the classic GU81M. And I don't have a bigger tube than this and probably will never have because I'm not exactly interested in that. But anyways, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this bullshit here. This is absurd. This, this rig here is just for the filament of the tube. Are you serious? So about the specs of this coil, of this project. Okay, first of all, the tube. This is the classic, super classic GU81M Russian painted, military painted. And you may think, maybe it's an overkill in this coil. This tube is an overkill, but no, because I'm using this tube at its maximum power rating. And uh, I would have used also a GK71 as tube, but maybe I would have stressed the tube too much, so I opted for something bigger to stay safe. As supply for this coil, I'm using here a mid-small mod, sadly a small one or small one, because this is the only one that I have that is modded on the high voltage wire of the secondary that is detached from the iron of the core, because to use a full bridge rectifier, because there's a full bridge rectifier, you have to isolate uh, the wire that goes to the iron because otherwise you'll put an insane voltage stress on the insulation of the primary instead and that will probably puncture almost certainly anyways this goes through also a fuse a micro oven fuse to a full bridge rectifier made with uh, micro oven diodes and i don't have anything against this type of diodes I like them. Yeah, they are uh, rated for uh, low current, but probably because they can't withstand more than like three watts of dissipation. Anyways, to make uh, smooth this C, I'm using here two uh, micro oven capacitors, just two, one microfarad each. And uh, they say apparently, and according to what I've seen, this is enough for making a smooth this C. And also on the supply, there is a, a bypass capacitor, a sort of MMC bypass capacitor that is uh, summed up uh, 10 nanofarads uh, rated for like uh, 4 kilovolts and, and it's made with smaller capacitors of 2 kilovolts each. And for the grid 2 of the tube, instead of using a giant resistor that I don't have and also rob power from the supply of the coil, I'm using a separate power supply here. This power supply is an old friend and it's capable of like 1.4 kilovolts at open circuit, but it's adjusted through my mini DIY variac here to give 600 volts under load and max power to the grid 2 of the tube. And this mini DIY variac here is really nice and useful for these tasks, and it's better described in this video here. And anyways, this mini DIY variac and the mod for powering the coil are under my bigger variac so the two voltages rise together and this is important anyways also on the grid two of the tube there is this capacitor here as bypass this is 100 nanofarads rated for one kilovolt it's polypropylene and it may seem small but it's actually an overkill about the actual coil here, I made some choices. Okay, first of all, spaced windings. Yeah, they are messy, but still spaced. And this to reduce the interwinding capacitance and probably have a coil with a more definite uh, resonant frequency. This thing oscillates at 16 MHz. That is, let's say, ideal at the end because you have to be uh, above 12 MHz, 11 MHz, but not too high because otherwise the efficiency drops a lot. Uh, as former, I'm using here a cardboard rolled into a tube. This thing is quite lightweight and probably ideal for this task. Anyways, this coil, as you can see, has the two coils, the primary shock coil and the output coil, that are quite near, like the same coil, and these two have both a base fed and magnetic feed. 
and about the tap, the connection here, if it's in the middle or not, this is probably uh, the best solution according to what I've seen online and also uh, you must uh, play a balance uh, between voltage and current on the output uh, because if you make an output coil too small you have uh, too much current and too low voltage uh, and vice versa with the tap too low with uh, an output coil too long you'll have uh, too much voltage and too low current anyways uh, for the anode of the tube here on the center connection I'm using a Litz wire that I made and it seems to work good and uh, there is a small top load here made with the two micro oven bells joined and the weak part of the coil is the output electrode here uh, that is uh, made with the original wire of the coils that is a two millimeters copper wire fairly thick they just uh, slightly warm up anyways and the weak spot is actually the electrode as I said because this electrode melts so I can't let this coil run for too long just uh, some seconds at maximum and I don't want to make this thing too complicated with a carbon electrode and also I gained a pretty decent uh, performance so I don't want to change anything for the feedback here I'm using a pickup capacitor on the actual output of the coil and not a base uh, winding uh, that drives the grid one of the tube because in my opinion up to this power probably this works best because when the output voltage will be the maximum also the drive on the grid one will be maxed so this system will automatically choose the best resonant frequency and also the best phase for the system and have the maximum performance and it's quite easy to adjust also anyways uh, for the capacitor i'm using here two glass jar leads that are probably too big in fact i had to space them a lot as you can see to have the best performance and also probably because uh, the tube being in pentode mode it doesn't require anything hard anything special for driving the grid one and as grid leak here i'm using some resistors here nothing big nothing special these uh, sum up to be uh, 14 kilo ohms rated for like 6 watts in total and there's also a litz wire here because the original wire that i fitted heated up so i used a litz wire like the anode of the tube here and also there was a safety capacitor on the feedback to avoid dusting on the grid one and it's dangerous for the tube but there is not in this case because i don't have an inline ceramic capacitor because i don't have any door knob capacitor <laughs> so uh, i took uh, that away because uh, the performance was lower and it improved without the capacitor for the filament of the tube i have this rig here that is absurd it's uh, probably an excessive overkill for whatever other kind of tube but not in this case and uh, this thing has this transformer here this comes from a tube tv and it has a secondary that was a 6.3 volts sc this secondary here and it was two conductors put in parallel and i put them in series to have 12.6 volts 12.7 volts and it's final adjusted on its uh, setting panel here its original setting panel and for the soft start for the soft start of the tube i have a ballast in series with the primary of the transformer and there is a really that shorts the ballast after some seconds and this reel is driven by a 555 circuit here driven powered by this small transformer and after some seconds uh, the transformer gives the full power like 12.7 volts uh, to the filament of the tube and the tube is ready and about the performance that I gained with this coil here, I'm having like 22 centimeters of arc in free air and probably even more. And this without anything on the electrode, no salts or glass or anything, just the copper. And I think it's cheating doing that. I don't know why they do that. You burn stuff in, in your coil. <laughs> why? 
And anyways, um, about the graph, the famous graph about the arc length, the graph that shows the relationship between uh, your subscribers amount in your channel and your arc length. In fact, as you can see, as you can perfectly see, the more subscribers you have, the smaller will be your arcs in your Tesla coils, etc. And my channel is exactly there, kind of in the middle. And uh, looking at the numbers, uh, I think it's, uh, well, accurate at the end. And here's the schematic. So let's try this thing. Filament on. Let's watch it glow. First, gradually, then after some seconds, because of the soft start. Okay, full power. Variac on. Let's give a bit of variac. Okay, let's see with this. And it glows like a regular Tesla coil. So now the tube is ready, let's give uh, like half variac and let's spark the output. And here's the pilot flame. Now let's see. Ooh. I'm cranking the variac kind of to the maximum. Let's say the maximum. Let's make it cool. Because there's the weak part of the coil. This is the electrode. Sometimes the flame dances, sometimes it's straight. It's too hot at the moment. Okay. Okay. Okay, now in slow motion, let's give kind of variac. Let's spark the output. Okay. Let's see.
ok so thank you for having watched my video and as always if there are updates about this coil this project you'll find them in the description of the video below so at this point i think uh, goodbye for now